Can I damage my phone by opening it like this? Why do different folding phones have different styles of crease? How are folding phones even possible? The answer to all these comes down to the same ancient magic that makes your laptops, your cabinets, even your front door work. The good old fashioned hinge. Today on Into the Fold, I'm taking an up close look at the not at all old fashioned hinges inside two of the world's least creased foldables to see what they can teach us about what it takes to fold a phone. Now that sounds a little like a sponsored intro, so let me just say right up front here that no, Oppo did not pay for this video. And as always, the manufacturer had no editorial input into its production. What Oppo did do was give me an hour with the people who designed its Find N2 and Find N2 Flip so I could understand just how these phones achieve what they do. And because I didn't have the courage to rip into one of my own Find N2 Flip review units, Oppo also gave me some samples of its hinges for me to go lens on with. If you want to see them in place and in context, well, my friend Tom the Tech Chap was gracious enough to let me steal some of his teardown footage, and the link to his video is in the description below. Thanks, Tom. One of my favorite parts about getting a closer look at components is learning about all the little things that are obvious in retrospect, but which I'd never really thought about. Like the Find N2 and Find N2 Flip hinges are almost identical. Oppo just essentially chopped off a third of the N2 hinge to make the Flip one. Also, I didn't realize there's oil applied at the factory to lubricate foldable hinges. Oppo revealed that when I asked why it didn't include brushes like Samsung does to protect the hinges against dust. The company told me those brushes would remove that lubrication, and it also added that there's no technical need for brushes in its hinge anyway, since it's designed to resist damage from dust. Of course, only time will tell if that's true. While we're making Samsung comparisons, let's talk about the crease and the gap. Samsung's Galaxy Fold and Flip deserve a lot of credit for forcing foldables into the mainstream, but they use a U-shaped hinge that prevents their phones from closing flat and produces a big trench down the center of the screen. Oppo solves for both problems by using what's come to be known as a water drop hinge, which is a variation on a design we first saw used by Motorola on its 2019 Razer. In the simplest terms, the display gets more room to spread out when the phone is closed, folding into a teardrop shape of 2.5 to 3 millimeters in diameter. A lot more than the 1.5 millimeter radius of Samsung's U-type hinge. So even though Oppo's displays are very similar, AMOLED, ultra-thin glass, in fact, Oppo's displays are made by Samsung, there's much less stress on the screen layers and the glue that keeps them all together in a water drop hinge design. That leads to a phone that folds flat with a shallower crease and hopefully less likelihood of spontaneous failure. So why did Samsung go with the U-type hinge? Well, I'm sure the full answer is probably complicated and dynamic, but the cynical answer is, probably the Chernobyl one. It's cheaper. Yeah, we don't know how much the hinges cost on Galaxy phones, but it's probably safe to say that they're less than the hundred bucks a pop Oppo says its first Find N hinge cost. Also, Samsung's hinges allow for IPX8 water resistance and the best implementation of this flex mode, the ability to pose the phone that adds a lot to the utility of a foldable. For a while, manufacturers using a water drop style hinge couldn't replicate either feature. And you only need to look as far as my Xiaomi or Honor reviews to find me complaining about their binary open or closed nature. Yay, who for now close? Ah. Motorola finally changed that with its Razer 2022, but it had to make its hinge much larger to do so. And its postures were much flimsier than the Galaxy Flip families. Well, Oppo kind of went for a middle ground. It kept the hinge fairly small, but the spring, cam, and friction plate all worked together to enable a range of postures, roughly equivalent to the Flip 4s. 
In the process, Oppo was also able to add IPX4 splash resistance, which isn't Samsung or Huawei's IPX8, but it's more than enough for most folks. Personally, I do prefer Samsung's tighter hinge, but Oppo says that with heavy users opening their phones upwards of 100 times a day, it wanted to make opening the phone easier, to remove a barrier to usage, so this was on purpose. In my view, it could have removed a lot more barriers to usage by giving the user a much more capable cover screen, but I've already covered that enough in my Find N2 Flip review. Whatever your personal preference, you'll be happy to know that opening your phone like Captain Kirk's communicator is not likely to land you in the brig. The Oppo engineers I spoke with wouldn't come right out and say that my wrist flick method is a good idea. In fact, they were clear that they don't recommend it. But they did confirm that they do test with one-handed opening in mind when designing the phones, that the maximum stress is borne by the rotation rod part of the hinge assembly, and that they're more worried about the display than the hinge in any case. Well, I told them that I've been flipping my phones like this since 2020 and haven't had a problem, but if they were really worried about it, they should just implement that spring-loaded push-to-flip button that we saw in flip phones over 20 years ago. Check out episode 10 of Into the Fold. To my surprise, the Oppo designers did admit to having studied this possibility, but they noted that flip phones of today are much heavier and more complex. So uh, maybe I shouldn't hold my breath for a push-to-flip button anytime soon. And maybe more to the point, adding that button would go against the trend. Because manufacturers are on a mission to minimize. That's obvious when you drop the Find N2 hinge next to the earlier Find N example. In one year, the company condensed its design from 138 to 100 parts. Honor went even further recently, reducing the part count on at least a portion of its hinge to four. I asked about this seemingly obsessive need to reduce the number of components, and, well, the answers are pretty predictable. The fewer the parts, the fewer the chances for something to go wrong. Also, a smaller component order is easier to manufacture at scale, and of course, less complexity equals less size and weight, which leaves room for things like bigger batteries. Look at this, even the rivets that anchor the hinge to the display base plate have been deleted on Find N2 in favor of a mortise design that's a lot like Lego. I know some of these details are a little dry, maybe, but I think they're still important because they highlight how challenging it can be to design phones like this. Oh, and while we're in the weeds, Oppo tells me that its hinge supplier is a company called Amphenol Phoenix, but the hinge design is done in-house at Oppo, not licensed to or from any other company. And the engineers I spoke with were very proud of that. One of them mentioned how pleased he was with the Find N2 Flip, despite the tight timelines he was under. And my favorite piece of feedback came from the product manager. Um, it, in order to better understand the target customer, whom Oppo believes has very strict quality standards in their life, this manager decided to take up a more strict personal health regimen. And in his words, I lost a lot of weight personally to understand. I think maybe the workload and tight timelines had something to do with that as well, but still, bravo. Foldables continue to evolve more quickly than any other smartphone segment. Within a few months of this video, I wouldn't be surprised to hear about Samsung ditching the tired U-type hinge, and hopefully Motorola will continue to improve the water drop hinge that it first made popular when and if those rumored new razors ever materialize. But if either of those things do come to pass, it will be at least partly because of brands like Oppo. Not just iterating, but iterating intelligently, putting pressure on those incumbents so they don't get complacent. The next things to keep an eye on will be how these hinges age over time and how well these manufacturers support customers who do run into problems. But with advancement happening this quickly, I think we will eventually get to a point we're already closer to than some people realize. The point at which foldables are just as reliable as their non-hinged counterparts. And I can't wait to see what these manufacturers come up with next. <clears throat> Especially if it's a push to flip button. 
This video was produced thanks to a handful of hinges, a review device, and an interview opportunity provided by the people at OPPO, whom I thank for their time. As I said earlier, though, neither OPPO nor any other company got editorial oversight, input, or early access to this video, and no compensation changed hands in exchange for its production. If you're wondering why I don't carry a Find N2 Flip, despite my admiration of its hardware, check out my full review of that phone, plus its plus-sized sibling and all the foldables I can get my hands on. Subscribe to The Mr. Mobile on YouTube. Until next time, from Michael Fisher, thanks for watching. And stay mobile, my friends.